So did you grow up loving superheroes? I feel like maybe I know the answer to this question. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, I'm a longtime superhero and comic book obsessive. Um, I grew up loving the X-Men. I feel like that was kind of a lot of people's gateway, especially mm. with the cartoon and everything. Um, I just, I've always loved the idea that you can shoot cool things out of your hands, like fire or lightning or stuff like that. Um, especially when um, you get angry because that just seems like probably a power that I shouldn't have, but that I would still like to have. <laughs> um, but yes, I grew up with the X-Men, and um, I was also super into the original uh, Christopher Reeves. Uh, sorry, let me say that. I was also super into the super original into Christopher <laughs> Reeves Superman movies. Um, I loved especially Lois Lane because she had the power to tell you to get her a cheeseburger at nine in the morning. <laughs> and it would somehow get one. So yes, longtime superhero fan. I'm gonna ask you about the adventures of Lois and Clark after this interview. Um, but yeah, I'd love for you to tell us a little bit about your book, Heroine's Journey, mm -hmm. which is the third in a series. And all of them are excellent. So can you just give a, a brief synopsis sure. of what it's about? <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, yes, uh, it is the third book in the Heroine Complex series. Um, it is about B. Tanaka, who is the little sister of Evie, who was the protagonist of the first book. And, um, you know, B was a teenager in the first two books, but now she's a little more grown up. She's still pretty impulsive. She's still kind of a problem child. She still has a lot of issues. Mm -hmm. She is trying her best, and she wants to be a superheroine alongside her big sister. So there's sister feels, there's some romance feels, there's the usual friendship feels, there's a cute dog, there's a porcelain unicorn battle. I usually try to present a list of all the things I think are entertaining that are in the book, but yeah. Yeah, I always have to um, point out the karaoke scenes that are in the series because there's just so much fun stuff that happens. Yeah. Um, so this is, you know, we, as we said, the third book in the series, and you've chosen to follow a different protagonist for each. Was that always your intention? And how difficult has it been to switch between those different characters? Because I feel like <laughs> even as a reader, sometimes I'm like, oh, I want to know what Evie is right. thinking, or I want to know what Aveda is thinking. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I think when I first started writing Heroine Complex, the first book, um, I was sort of thinking of it as a series where maybe we would follow Evie, who is the first protagonist who, you know, is very sort of wallflowery and learn, you know, can shoot fire out of her hands. And I thought maybe we'd follow her for a series. And then, I don't know, I just, I really love the idea of exploring different protagonists. Um, the, the series is kind of, you know, a mix of fantasy and romance. Sometimes we call it romanticy <laughs> and, um, you know, coming of age hijinks. And a lot of times in a uh, romance series, they will introduce, you know, sort of the, the secondary characters as the protagonists of the next books or things mm -hmm. like that. So um, I got really interested in sort of following that model. And um, especially when I was writing Heroine Complex, one thing that kind of made um, Aveda who is the, the secondary character in the first book. Um, one thing that made her real to me, because she is kind of a diva, she's a little bit difficult, she's a little bit of an antagonist for, for Evie in the first book, um, was that I just started thinking about what would her book be? Like, what would her kind of journey be? And I think that made her a much better secondary character and then gave me more to explore with her as a protagonist. Um, and as for switching between them, it, it is a little bit of a, a challenge at first. Mm -hmm. Like when I first started, when I first start writing a new book, um, I have to kind of remember like, oh, this person reacts differently than the previous protagonist. And particularly mm -hmm. with B in the third book, um, the other two are so prone to like overthinking and overanalyzing mm -hmm. and they're kind of always in their heads. And B is very impulsive. She's very reactive. She kind of just reacts to what's right in front of her and she does it purely through emotion. Mm -hmm. And so that was like a little bit of a difficult switch for me to make because I'm more of an overthinker. <laughs> um, but it was a lot of fun. <laughs> and you mentioned emotion. That's one of my favorite parts of this series is that um, their superpowers are so tied to their emotional yeah. intelligence or or not in some yeah. cases. <laughs> um, and you know that's something that with 
female protagonists or, you know, I feel like as we move forward in terms of representation, it's like women first got to be strong female characters by being like more masculine, but to have these characters um, be really strong because of their more Mm -hmm. like traditionally feminine Mm -hmm. um, traits is really cool, especially for their source, their superpowers to be so tied to emotion. So I'm assuming that is something you (laughs) thought about before creating the superpowers, but I just love to know how you came up with the superpowers too and the rules for for them once you knew what they Mm -hmm. were. Um, Yeah, I mean, I don't know if that was something I did um, super consciously, but I always loved the idea that um, there's sort of power to be found in just acknowledging that you're kind of a mess, because we're all a mess. (laughs) Like, let's be honest, we're all a mess. And I think a lot of the time, we're trying so hard to, like, tamp down on that or control it or make it go away. Mm -hmm. Um, And I did like the idea that it is actually quite powerful to acknowledge emotions and process them and, Mm -hmm. you know, honor them. And so I think when I was thinking of, in particular, Evie's power, um, the the protagonist of the first book, um, I just had this idea that she was so shut down and closed off and she was really trying to sort of control herself and Mm -hmm. control her life and you know that's another thing with um with women both in fiction and real life is there's always someone trying to control us Mm or someone telling us you need to like get a handle on your emotions or you need to like not be so angry you Mm -hmm. need to like tamp down on the rage and I was like no let it out (laughs) let it out so um I just I thought there was something for me about that that was very um was very powerful to be able to let that out and so that's how I thought of of her power and then with Aveda who's um a telekinetic but not at least at the beginning not a very good telekinetic Mm -hmm. I thought it would be funny if she had a power that was sort of like like not as interesting Mm -hmm. and not as powerful and so she makes up for it by being like the baddest ass that she can. Like, she's like, yeah, I have a superpower, but it's really me that's the reason I'm a superhero. Yeah, and that's such a, I feel like, a thing with women, too, where they work so hard to make it look like they're not working. They're like, this just comes naturally to me. I'm this physically fit and able to, like, fight off (laughs) demon cupcakes or whatever. Yeah. (laughs) Um, So the series is set in a fictional version of San Francisco. Mm Uh, when I first started reading it, I hadn't been to San Francisco, Ooh. and now I have. Oh, nice. I don't know if that has any effect <laughs> on my reading of it, but I love, I just want to keep returning to this mm-hmm. world and this setting. Um, and yeah, I guess, why did you want to set it in San Francisco in the Bay Area? And follow-up question, Do you ju- are you just constantly thinking of clever puns for <laughs> businesses, for fictional <laughs> businesses, because there's so many good ones in your books? Thank you. Um, You know, I said it in San Francisco because these are sort of, in addition to being superhero fantasies and romances and and friendship stories, I also thought of them as sort of um, dealing with that second coming of age a lot of us have when we're in our 20s, when we're in our very early 20s, um, where it's sort of like, you know, you maybe graduated from college or you finished high school, you're out in the world, you're trying to sort of figure yourself out. And I feel like we all kind of grow through this second coming of age. Um, so I went to college in the Bay Area. I went to a Mills College, which is a women's college in Oakland. And I felt like um, that's kind of where I had my second coming of age. That's where um, I sort of like hopefully figured out who I am and had all those sort of early 20s adventures Mm -hmm. and, you know, everything in San Francisco in the Bay Area always seems so exciting. You know, the the streets actually sparkle. (laughs) Like, there's so (laughs) many fun, interesting locations. Um, There's so much to do. There's always people out. And um, so I thought it would be fun to set it in San Francisco just because it's such a vibrant city, but also because I felt like having a sort of 20-something coming of age was something that I could really relate to Mm -hmm. and hopefully write um, authentically. Um, And as for coming up with the business names, (laughs) I'm actually really bad at puns. So (laughs) I think that um, the ones that have been in the book have actually been crowdsourced on Twitter. Mm. Like I think um, Cake My Day, which is the the bakery, I think someone came up with that on Twitter because I asked like, what would be a fun name for like a cute tweet bakery? So. Mm.